opportunity. But had you been one of them three eight, and you heard all of a sudden while you're down there doing your daily deed, and you hear a sound on the other end of the street, and there's a roar going on. What's going on down there? They said them crazy Jesus people been praying. And now they say there's tongues of fire on top of their head. <laughs> and they're talking in some kind of funny language. <laughs> now, had you been one of them 380s, that would have been a gut sinker. Man. To be, oh, God, what I miss. Oh, God, what I miss. Oh, God, what did I miss. Then here comes 120 men and women that was obedient to seek the Lord. And they come out with power to change a nation. Our world's different today. Because those people obeyed God and stayed in prayer. I said our world's different. We're preaching the gospel halfway around the world from where they are because those people stayed in the place of prayer. Amen. And if anybody gets saved in our ministries, if anybody gets used for the glory of God, it's because we've stayed in a place with God. Amen. That's the only way it happens. Hallelujah. Amen. Now I'm going to try to in just a minute. Everybody's put learning ahead of praying. What do you mean? Well, if we believe we're useful, we're going to believe you could be useful, call to God, we're going to send you to a seminary. Lord, have mercy. Going to have to get all this knowledge in you. I just have a question for you. If the seminary is a place to be, how come they ain't on fire? <laughs> When's the last time you heard of a revival breaking out in the seminary? <laughs> Never heard them say, take the deaf and the blind down to the seminary, seminary cemetery, whatever it is. <laughs> and that's funny, but we believe the same thing. What do you mean? Because we always want to sit around and get preached to and get taught. But we won't seek God ourselves. So we're thinking we can attain God by knowledge. But you ain't going to attain God by knowledge. You'll get it in the knowledge of the Lord by the Spirit. The revelation of the Spirit comes to you through prayer. Thank you, God. And there's nothing anybody can do to ever steal that. Said about old uh, John Bunyan, the guy that wrote Pilgrim's Progress. He was a preacher of his time. And the, the religious the religious of that time hated him because he was telling them their way wasn't right. And he preached the truth to them. And they locked him up. And they took his wife and his kids from him and locked him in a cell that was so small he couldn't sit down in it. His knees had hit one side of the wall, his back had hit the other. They wouldn't even remove his human refuge from him. Things had come out. They wouldn't even remove that from him. Left him in the stench and fed him in the same place where he dumped in and had to go to the bathroom. They locked him in there because he was a preacher, a real one. And they'd come to him every day. They said, that, they said in history books, that they'd come to him and they'd ask him, they'd say, if you'll recant, we'll let you out. And this was his statement. Why should I want out? Anywhere Christ is is a kingdom now for me. What happened? He learned a place of prayer. And he had a secret place with God even in the place of trouble. Oh, hallelujah. I said hallelujah. They'd come to him and show him his wife and his children. Let him see him, get a look at him. A few years, I think two or three years they come to him. And they'd say, if you'll just deny what you've been preaching and quit preaching to people, we'll let you out and go back home with your wife and children. And he told them, as soon as I get in the courtyard, I'll be right back to preaching. Yes. Why? Yes. Because a man or a woman has been alone with God, no matter what you take from him, you can take whatever you want, but you can't take Jesus from me. Hallelujah. Yes. You can't take him. There's nothing you can do. He forgave an old drug head like me, a man that was so evil and vile, he's changed me, but it's took prayer. It took intimacy with God. Your addictions, the desires that ain't like God, will begin to leave you when you finally get serious with God and seek him with your whole heart. Amen. Things change then. And they don't change until. Because right. once you get serious, then your faith is going to lay hold. I remember uh, I was in a meeting one time. Man, there's been so many things I could talk about right now, but I'm going to just tell you this in the prayer. So many instances of prayer. 
and the, the rewards of just staying alone with the Lord. I was in uh, Illinois. Seeking God had been up there for around three weeks with this minister and his minister's conviction. And I mean, it was a prayer time like one I've seldom had. Just so much time to pray. He'd preach during the day. And we'd have lots of altar calls. It was a school of Christ. Just a real man of God, Brother B.H. Clinton, out of Beaumont, Texas. And I was seeking the Lord. Then three weeks, I went up there on purpose to get a hold of God. I'd come back, drive back to Richwoods on Sundays to preach to church and go right back. Didn't even spend much time with my family. I was doing a time of separation. Three weeks, just seeking God. A lot of it, just not eating a whole lot, just seeking God, just looking for the Lord. I'd already been in the ministry for quite some time at that point, but my hunger for God. I thank the Lord. There have been times of weariness. There have been times of temptation and trouble, but God has always allowed me by the grace of God to keep a hunger. Hallelujah. No matter what, no matter what's going on, there's always something inside of me pushing me. There's more of God. There's more of God. No matter what, there's more of God. Hallelujah. There's more to receive from the Lord. Hallelujah. Something. Turn and turn and turn it. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Middle of the night. Woo. Hallelujah. Early morning. Night time. Jesus. Jesus. My God. Hallelujah. Woo. God. Hallelujah. I'm thankful. My God. I want more of it. Thank you, God. What do you do when you find a fire? If you want more, you pour gas on it. Praise the Lord. That's what you do. <laughs> Hallelujah. Pour gas on it. Hallelujah. And I'm seeking the Lord up there in this place. I mean, it's getting serious. Hallelujah. I'm really messed up. Hallelujah. Seeking God. Seeking God. Hallelujah. And I was going to this, this park, and there was a, a homosexual tavern there. In a homosexual church, I mean, this is a really dark area. And I'm not, I'm not saying they can't be saved nothing. I'm just telling you what kind of atmosphere we was in. And I'd go down this park, and I'd be preaching down there during the daytime. I had to find an outlet, man. I, you know, I can't just take all this preaching and prayer and not get something out. I've got to take my get there and amp and go down there and set it up and preach to these crazy people. i got to see somebody get saved. I can't hang out with church people long, man. I'm an evangelist. i got to find somebody lost. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. But in that, I'm praying, man. I'm getting out of business. And one day, I <coughs> prayed and prayed and prayed. And I couldn't pray no more. I'm knelt down there, and everybody's leaving. They're going to get dinner, and I hadn't been eating. I care less. You know, I'm just, ah! Well, finally, I couldn't cry no more. I couldn't even talk. I had nothing else to say. I prayed out. And I'll never forget it. I was knelt down there and it felt like my breath left my body. And the last prayer I said, it felt like everything. Like I could, my carcass could have just fell over. Like everything in me left. And then the Lord spoke. And he said, as I was with Abraham, I'll be with thee. He said, I'll meet you along the way as you do my will out there. Let me know. He wasn't going to meet me hiding away in some church, but he's going to meet me as I get out there and do what he tells me to do. Praise the Lord. So when I'm preaching the gospel in the streets and stuff, I'm always looking for it. When I stretch a tent, when we plant a church, whatever we're doing, I'm looking for a meeting. Hallelujah. Oh, I want to see people saved, delivered, and healed. But what you really after, <coughs> preacher? Oh, I'm after a visitation of <coughs> the Almighty God. I'm looking. He may be in somebody here tonight, praise the Lord. Oh, I'm looking around. He may be some stranger that you never thought about. It. Some poor man sitting along the wayside. He may be some bum nobody even talk about. It may be Jesus you're looking at. Hallelujah. And if you treat him right, he might start talking. Amen. I'm looking. Hallelujah. Well, I got through that time. And as soon as he said that, I'd begin to cry again. He said, as I'm with Abraham, I'll be with thee. I'll meet you along the way. As you do my will out there. I mean, that voice permeated me from all directions, just like in my ears, behind me. The voice of the Lord's like John said. He said, it's the voice of many waters. And I know what he was saying. That was the loudest thing that John had in his time to compare what the voice of the Lord's like, the voice of many waters. He didn't have jet engines to talk about. He didn't have sonic booms. What he did have was waterfalls rolling over a bank to explain to us what it's like, the real presence of God. It's not only heard, it's felt. And I know what that experience is. It feels like it comes at you from all angles and permeates you. Not just heard, but felt. I'm talking about the audible presence, the voice of the Lord. That shakes you to your being. Ooh. 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 Hallelujah. I'm like, ah! I hear him in my spirit, but there's times when that come on. Hallelujah. I'm like, ha! Ah! Woo! Scared to death. But love it. I mean, I, you can get addicted to something, will kill you. You get addicted to God, Moses was. That's a lot of people running the other way when the fire was on the mountain. There's a true addict. Moses runs in the fire. Mm -hmm. Other people go, I ain't talking to him. Moses, I'm Even though the Bible said he exceedingly feared.